everyone and welcome. I'm Kim Newcomer, the Senior Manager of Medical Advocacy and Community Engagement at the Colorectal Cancer. I'm also a stage four rectal cancer survivor. And I'm Mariel McLeod, Bilingual Patient and Family Support Navigator and Buddy Program Manager. And I am a stage three young onset colon cancer survivor. Well, we wanted to thank you for tuning in with us today as we wrap up Young Survivors Week of 2022. And we'd like to kick it off by extending a huge thank you to Tayo for being our amazing sponsor of our Ally documentaries. This week, our young allies came together not only to spread awareness by sharing their inspiring stories, but kicked it up a notch by bringing awareness to some important issues that come along with a colorectal cancer diagnosis. We've had some incredible caregivers that also provided their personal experiences and provided their perspectives as a CRC diagnosis impacts their loved one as well. One of the greatest things that our advocates wanted to talk about this Young Survivors Week was how to better advocate for your health. And here is one of our amazing allies, Angela Carraway, to talk just about that. Can you imagine seeing blood in your stool every time you had a bowel movement? Well, that was me at the age of 43. I found a primary care physician. She recommended me to a gastroenterologist who did not want to uh, perform a colonoscopy on, my, on me because of my age. And his number one reason was because he didn't feel that the insurance was going to pay for it. I'm glad I advocated for myself because I shared with him that cancer runs in my family. And I shared with him that I had some money that I could work on a payment plan, work with the hospital on taking care of my colonoscopy. However, I didn't have to do that. He made the appointment, I had the colonoscopy, and I was diagnosed with stage three colorectal cancer. But you know what? Through the grace of God, strength from my tribe, and my prayers, and the prayers of others, I'm here today. And I hope that this video will help inspire others who may be going through the same thing. Advocate for yourself. Get checked. Don't wait, get checked. We need you here. Your family needs you here. Wow, that was a fantastic video by Angela. Next, we're going to, to hear from David Thau, who's gonna be talking about young onset symptoms and his diagnosis and how important screening is at any age. My name's Dave Thau, and uh, three years ago, I was a healthy, uh, normal 34-year-old uh, young man until I found out that I wasn't. Um, I uh, went into the emergency room uh, feeling like my stomach was gonna explode and found out that I had a seven and a half centimeter tumor in my left descending colon, uh, stage 3C colon cancer. Um, it, I'd had signs and symptoms uh, for years, uh, but never really went and got them checked out. Uh, and so I'm here to say uh, that early detection is key. Uh, if you have symptoms, if you feel like something isn't right, go and see a doctor. It can save your life. Uh, if you are of age, get a colonoscopy. Uh, if this is caught early, uh, it is easy to treat um, and it is so critical uh, that you get out and get screened and uh, listen to your body. Wow, those are both fabulous messages from Angela and David. Well, Marielle, we kind of are going to recap this week. Uh, I know we've had some great messaging going on. So Monday, our focus was nutrition and fitness. So we're going to start our next video off with Alice, or not Allison, uh, Vanessa Gigliotti, who's going to talk about uh, how exercise and yoga really changed her life since her cancer diagnosis. My name is Vanessa Gigliotti. Having battled stage four colon cancer at 28 has left me with a lot of issues. Issues like herniated discs, neuropathy, painful scar tissue, and what my orthopedic surgeon likes to call a spine that looks like it got massive amounts of radiation when in fact I got massive amounts of chemo. I am very grateful that chemo has helped me to live longer. However, whether you are in treatment or you're done with treatment, we have to do everything possible to live our best lives one day out of the time. And the way I found this 
is through yoga. Practicing yoga has many benefits, especially when you suffer from neuropathy, because it helps to relax your body and improve the flow of blood to your extremities. For me, it helps to center my attention to my body by controlling my movements and through poses, right? Not only test your endurance, but it has you stretching in ways that you didn't even know were possible. Yoga helps me clear my mind and it also helps me to be conscious of my breathing, which helps so tremendously with the metastatic cancer that I had in my lungs that left, I think, the worst of all the scar tissue and also the most painful. Some of my favorite poses include the Padsmana. That's a pose which you sit down, you put your feet in front of you and stretch it out. And you also stretch out your arms in front of you. And you could kind of wiggle your toes and wiggle your hands and fingers and breathe. And you stretch and stretch as much as you can. This is the most amazing way to get the blood flowing to your extremities. And that's especially helpful when you're having a very painful neuropathy day. My other favorite poses include the downward dog and the warrior pose. That so helps with painful back when it's tight and there's a lot of inflammation. Another other favorite poses are the cobra and the upward dog. That helps with neck, like the painful neck, herniated discs. And when you have nerve damage that goes down up and down your arms, I definitely recommend those two poses. But my absolute favorite is the spinal twist. So this one isn't great to start off with. This is when you need, a, you have a little more endurance and you've learned to move your body a little better. The spinal twist does not um, activate or make my hernias pop out, right? And it also does not affect any issues that I have in my body. Instead, it makes me feel like I got a full body massage. I personally recommend yoga for every single cancer patient out there. For me personally, it's helped relieve anxiety. It's helped me to get flexibility back in my body. It's helped me to walk normal again. And it's helped with scar the tightness of scar tissue. Who knows? Practicing yoga, we may make a yogi out of you yet. All right, it was so great to hear from Vanessa. I personally love yoga. Now, if you're not quite ready for yoga yet, we have Tiffany up next, who's going to talk to you, us about walking and the benefit of staying active during treatment. Hi, I'm Tiffany, and I was diagnosed with stage 3 colorectal cancer at the age of 37. It was really challenging to try to get back into shape after nearly a year of treatment. But while taking care of my mental health is important, I know taking care of my physical health is as well. So even if it's just going on a little walk, doing some yoga, or taking the stairs instead of the elevator, I do everything I can to make sure that I'm moving my body every single day. What wonderful videos that Vanessa and Tiffany provided for us during Young Survivors Week. And while we're talking about how to better take care of our bodies, I feel that the greatest thing about Tuesday was talking about how to take care of our mind. And Allison, one of our incredible young onset survivors and very huge advocate, wants to talk to us and share a little bit about how treating the mind, body, and soul actually are beneficial for us as patients and survivors. Hi, I'm Allison Rosen, a stage two colorectal cancer survivor and passionate advocate. I've been cancer free for about nine years now. And one of the biggest lessons that I think I've learned along the way is you have to treat a patient's mind, body, and soul, which means you treat their physical health, but you have to treat their mental health. To deal with my mental health, I tried to find a cancer community, a community of people, patients, survivors, caregivers, advocates, people just understood what I was going through. And those people have become my family. The other thing I've done is attend a regular support group and I see a psychologist on a regular basis. Even nine years later, I still need help with my mental health. Never forget, you're never alone in your cancer journey. What a wonderful message, Allison, and thank you so much for such great, encouraging words. You know, Kim, besides mental health, a great 
component that goes with it, especially as many of our young onset caregivers and patients head into survivorship is oftentimes the fear of recurrence. I would like to introduce you all to one of our wonderful Never Too Young members and medical professional Shauna, as she shares her fear of recurrence and how it impacts young survivors. As a young, healthy healthcare provider, I thought that colorectal cancer was unlikely because I had no risk factors. And again, I was healthy and 31, but my doctor still found a three centimeter mass in my rectum. I'm so thankful that with chemo, radiation, surgery, and more chemo, I'm now two years cancer free. But nobody really talks about life after cancer. I can tell you that every time my stomach even gurgles or makes a noise, any slight pain I might have, even if I just bumped into a wall, I'm still thinking in the back of my head, oh no, the cancer's back. And that could even be the day after I had a CT scan that showed I was cancer free. I mean, that fear just never goes away. That is so true. That fear never really goes away. I know I have a scan next week and it's been 14 years, but it feels like I'm right back in it when those dates creep up. Absolutely. But, uh, just really thankful for both of those messages um, about mental health. We know it's such an important thing. We need to really keep our eye on as patients and survivors and, and care our caregivers too. Absolutely. Okay, so to next, we're gonna talk about Wednesday. Um, we had some big news coming out of uh, clinical trials this week at ASCO, and MSK had a uh, clinical trial for stage two and stage three uh, MSI high rectal cancer, which inspires hope for the cancer community. Now, this was a small phase two trial, and it's the first step in validating a new therapy. The test uh, affects the the tested, it tested the effect, sorry, of immunotherapy on stage two and three rectal cancers with deficient mismatch repair. While this is really exciting news, it only accounts for five to 10% of patients with rectal cancer. But some other exciting news is one of our Never Too Young members, Sasha, was part of this trial and she is now cancer free. So that's super exciting. If you wanna learn more, we'll have a link to our blog that talks all about this PDL1 inhibitor. And also, I just want to mention that uh, we did, we were at ASCO last week and we did have a sit down with Dr. John Marshall. And we're also going to put that uh, video link in the comments. And we are talking about late breaking abstracts, including the Star Trek, uh, the Star Trek uh, ooh, trial, which is pretty exciting. I know it's kind of strange. I don't want to say go where no rectum has gone before because it's overdoing it. But yes, there's phase three trials coming out. So it's very exciting news and that link will be in the chat. Thank you so much, Kim. Very great and huge exciting news in all things colorectal cancer, but especially for clinical trials that are in the works that will definitely change how um, our patients and our constituents definitely beat colorectal cancer in their lifetime. Um, one other thing that we did cover, which as you know, it is a great and special place in our hearts, is featuring our amazing and selfless caregivers and how great they take care of their loved ones, whether they are their spouses, partners, significant others, parents, child, or even oftentimes their best friends. I would like to highlight one of our amazing caregivers, Megan, that is sharing a video as to how she is honoring her father as his caregiver. One week back in 2001, I was at the beach with my family for vacation. My dad started getting pretty sick on the trip. Uh, we joked that it was just all of the boardwalk popcorn that he was eating, um, but the symptoms definitely continued. And when we got back from the trip, he went to the doctor and soon found out that he was in an advanced stage of colon cancer. Uh, despite all of their best efforts, unfortunately he passed away at the age of 41 in early 2002 um, when I was just 10 years old. So now I'm involved in the Colorectal Cancer Alliance as a way to remember my dad, raise awareness about the symptoms of colon cancer, um, as well as the importance of early detection and screening. It's my hope that through all of this advocacy and the work that the Alliance does every day, we can reduce the number of kids that are growing up without their parents through early detection and screening. 
Thank you so much, Megan, for allowing us into that part of your life and sharing your story. One way, Kim, that I know you're pretty familiar with when we talk to other caregivers is oftentimes how can we advocate for our loved ones and our friends and those impacted by colorectal cancer and how can we help them? Well, I would like to introduce you all to Kate. She is one of our Never Too Young members and has done a great job with explaining as to how to best encourage those to listen to their bodies even when a doctor says that there's nothing wrong with them or their mental health is at stake. Hi, my name is Kate Donat and I'm answering the question, what is life like for a young survivor on behalf of my cousin's wife, Erica Paul? Um, Erica was diagnosed with stage four colon cancer at age 26 and she unfortunately passed away at age 29. Um, life for her during these three years or so was full of treatment and scans and a lot of anxiety in between those scans. However, it was also full of a lot of joy. Um, Erica really surrounded herself with friends and with her family and she brought people in instead of pushing them away. I think she knew that she needed help and she needed the emotional support and she really made sure to include people in her lives. Um, she also, spreading awareness was a huge part of Erica's legacy, and I do that now on, on her behalf. So I'm here to say don't assume. Uh, listen to every symptom that you have and what your body is telling you, even if the doctors tell you it's something else. Wow, that was so fantastic. We just love Kate and Megan and the impact they're making on behalf of their loved ones, even though they passed and sharing their messages. So thank you to both of them. So and the last so thing, much. I'm sorry. No, I was just saying thank you so much, Kim. That was just very well put. <laughs> <laughs> so the last thing, Marielle, and I wanna to talk to you about is our uh, Cancer Support Community um, SEER Registry. Now, this uh, registry uncovers the, the emotional, physical, practical, and financial implications of cancer. So, and we want to make sure we're taking care of everyone and, and collecting the data so patients and caregivers receive the, the support they need. Now, by taking this survey, you can join thousands of others in helping to influence healthcare policies, enhance cancer care, and improve cancer support. You can also start and stop the survey at any point in time. Simply use the unique link and personalized PIN number that will be emailed to you once you register for the survey, and you can pick up right where you left off. You do not need to re-enter the survey through the home page. The survey um, is also part of an institutional review board, or IRB, as you might hear called from time to time. This is an approved research study, and that means basically that every information that you Place in this survey will be kept confidential. We will definitely guard your rights and welfare of participants are definitely protected. We have dropped the link below in the comments so that you may register the um, Cancer Support Community Registry Survey. I'm really excited to see the results of the survey. It, the survey will be a, a two years, so you'll get periodic emails to check in on you and see how you're doing and collect any information. So we really appreciate any help you can give us. Absolutely. Okay, Marielle, we're getting down to one of our last videos. Today, we're going to uh, leave off with Anna Dahlgren, who is on the Never Too Young board and a young survivor. And she's going to talk about the message and the importance of early screening. Yes. Hi, my name is Anna, and I was diagnosed with colon cancer when I was 33. I didn't have any family history of colon cancer, and I had no idea I could get it at such a young age. I had blood in my stool one time, so I decided to talk to my doctor about that because I knew it wasn't normal. She recommended that I have a colonoscopy. And of course, I wasn't that thrilled about it, but I wanted to make sure everything was okay. They found a fairly large tumor and decided to have a colon resection the following week. After my colon resection, I found out that I was diagnosed at stage one. I was very excited about that because I knew that meant that I didn't need any chemo or any radiation and that things should be okay being diagnosed at such an early stage. I have been eight years out now and everything has been okay. I just wanted to let you all know the importance of not ignoring your symptoms and the importance of early screening. 
That is such a powerful message because we know incidences of young onset colorectal cancer are rising every year. So it's an important message if you have symptoms, signs and symptoms, don't hesitate. Be your own best health advocate. All right, we wanna say a quick thank you to all of our Never Too Young members who helped us create allies, ally documentaries this year. And a special thanks to Taiho for supporting our efforts. Yes, and we would like to leave you with some of the amazing faces that are part of our Never Too Young community. And we just want you all to see that colorectal cancer as a young adult has many faces. And through these pictures, you will see that, you know, we're just everyday, normal young adults trying to live our best life like everyone else, but we're also parents, daughters, sisters, friends, husbands, neighbors, but at the end of the day, we're all too young for colorectal cancer. <laughs>